Okay, and we're back, and in this video we're discussing why combat tends to be treated differently in RPGs to other parts of the game. Now what do I mean to when I say combat is treated differently? Well, in most of the game, role-playing is a collaborative experience where the GM describes an initial situation, the players respond to it, the GM describes how that has in turn changed the setting, often with the help of the players in more collaborative based games and so on and so forth the game continues to be built up using this method however this seems to change somewhat when combat takes place as the game suddenly takes a far more tactical bent and becomes less about collaborative storytelling and more about who gets the initiative who has the highest armor class who has the greatest toughness etc and it gives a very different feel to the game which, if not expertly handled, can be somewhat jarring and at odds with the rest of a game session. After all, in some cases it can seem that the game suddenly pauses in the style of a popular RPG. The music changes to this. And then the combat proceeds in rounds, moving in initiative order, with everyone making their attack and defense rolls, crossing off their hit points, making various combat maneuvers, etc. Now, whilst there's no real problem with this in and of itself, it just seems a little odd that it's treated so differently to the rest of a session. Now, my musings on this may be spurred by the fact that I've recently been playing Dungeon World, Fate, and a variety of other more storytelling-based games, most of which do not feature this more structured combat, the combat being simply a, another element of the narrative. Certainly Dungeon World doesn't even have initiative and it encourages the players to take an active part in deciding how the combat unfolds with the GM narrating based on character actions and responses to them. Now one thing to bear in mind if you do go for more of these free-formed combat ideas is that you need to ensure everyone gets a fair crack of the whip. If only those who shout the loudest get an action, it can lead to some players being feeling like they're left out of the game session. And this isn't what you want. You want to encourage all of the players to get involved in a combat. You want to have them all excited, you want to have them all engaged. Now. There are many different ways you could possibly do this without resorting to an initiative system. However, if you're going for an entirely freeform combat system, I'd suggest that you simply, as a GM, start with the player on your left and work in a clockwise direction, handling each player in turn, unless there's a compelling reason for you to break this order during the combat. However, I would also suggest that you don't strictly adhere to the one round, one movement style of D&D, Pathfinder, etc. I would suggest that if you're involving a single player and you're dealing with their role, in the aftermath of that you might turn to one of the other players and say to them, okay, so you see your friend has fallen down under a rain of blows from the evil orc barbarian and his blackguard associate, how do you react to that? And then you allow them to take their reaction, then you jump back to your original order and you continue around occasionally dropping in other reactions from other people that way everyone gets a chance at the spotlight everyone gets a chance to participate and people get a chance to react to other people's actions for instance in the dungeon world game we've recently played the elven bard was standing in the doorway of the cockatrice insider when the dragon unleashed a raging torrent of white hot flame at the doorway where he was standing. I turned to the player of the Barbarian who was stood behind him and said you see this gout of flame rushing towards him what do you choose to do? In this case the Barbarian realizing that she had far more chance of surviving a direct hit from the dragon fire threw her bardic companion out of the way taking the full brunt of the blast on herself. Now normally unless held actions were being used this would not be possible in a more structured combat however I thought it worked brilliantly and it allowed other people to get involved in the action so as I say I recommend you that you give freeform approaches a go 
and if you as long as you consider certain things like making sure everyone has a go then it could be brilliant and i think you'll find it very enjoyable so if you have anything to say on this matter leave your comments in the box below perhaps you're a fan of the more structured combat perhaps you have some suggestions for improving it or making it less intrusive perhaps you're a more a fan of the ad hoc combat and you have other methods of making sure that everyone gets a fair crack of the whip at combat maybe you have some other suggestions whatever suggestions you have if you enjoyed watching these videos and would like to see more i hope you'll click on the subscribe button down below and i look forward to reading what you've written